How's that for audio? It is one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. It's working. Welcome to Dog Sledding 101. Basically, the last visit we did uh, how to harness a dog and, and uh, come up to the kennel and go for a ride. And today, I'm going to do the, the breakdown. By the end of the demonstration, you'll be able to name two positions in the team and name two commands used to drive a team. As far as the dog team goes, there's a, there's a lot of variables, you know, anywhere from two dogs could be a team all the way up to 22, 24. I run anywhere from 12 to 16. I, I train 12 minimum. And that's, this is a line set up for four dogs. For the most part, it gives you an idea. When you're on the sled, it's all vocal commands. It's literally, everything is coming from your voice. It's coming from the musher and all the training. So. When they just know the other left, they decide to do some stuff. And when you're running 12, 14, 16, 20, I mean, the dog team can go from here all the way out into the hallway and up the stairs before you get to the end of the line. So when they, when, when you're giving commands, they're paying attention. A really good leader is a huge asset. So the breakdown of the team, you have the lead dogs. They're the ones that listen to the bulk of the commands. They're your most attentive. And a lead dog, a really good lead dog, is a little standoffish. It's not going to just jump right into a crowd of people. They're going to really, they're, they'll be attentive to you. If I utter any vocal cord noise at all, you'll literally see him turn near. He say something. So that's that's a real good sign of a good leader. And the swing dogs are actually backup leaders, or maybe your main leader's taking a break. You move them back in the team, and in the distance races, you could be out for days, days and days, 10 days in a row without, um, sometimes without resupply, sometimes a resupply once a day. So the swing dogs in a long stretch of team, or a long stretch of dogs, the swing dogs actually help the leaders steer the team. And when, when you're like, for instance, out in the middle of the lake, and you give a command, you need them to move over a little bit, you're aiming for a landing. Okay, and they're just, they're just going. So, you know, you need the whole string of dogs to turn. That's where the, the swing dogs are really important. They'll help, they'll help bring the whole team around. The, the bulk of the team is literally that. It's your team dogs. Those are your muscle. Those are your type two firefighters. These are the guys doing a lot of the work. Most of the dogs don't need to pull any harder than what I'm pulling on my shirt right now. As long as everybody's in unison, everybody's acting like a team, good, good crew cohesion, and the wheel dogs are sometimes even your your leaders taking taking a break as well. The wheel dogs are real important because they help steer the sled. So when you're coming through a, a technical part of the, the trail, maybe around a couple of really nasty boulders and and really close to a tree and then a tight turn and then right out onto the lake, like if you're mushing up in the boundary waters. The wheel dogs will help steer the sled away from the obstacles. And you can, you can train the wheel dogs with certain commands or even just noises, and they'll, they'll pull one, one way or the other. The sled itself, the average mid-distance sled or recreational sled is six feet long, and that is just the bed itself plus the runners, so it gives you an idea what kind of length you're talking about. The, um, the harnesses are really important. And you guys got to play with these a little bit in your demonstration earlier. The harnesses harness the energy, and each harness is fitted for the dog. You notice the, the H-back harness has a brown loop, that's a size, literally, when you walk out to the, to the kennel or out to the dog truck, grab a big bundle of harnesses, you're grabbing a yellow one for this dog, a blue one for this dog, a brown one, a brown one. You know, those are, those are a quick telltale sign as to what size the harness is. Sometimes you even write the dog's name on the harness. They have a dedicated harness. So, as far as the dog team itself goes, you have the different lines. The lead dogs have just a neckline between them, and they start the beginning of the, of the
the lines. There's a Y line right behind the lead dogs, and the Y line, the lead dog's Y line, connects to the gang line. The gang line is the main line. And then each pair of dogs has an neck, individual neckline off of the, the gang line. So each dog has their collar controlled. And the really nice thing about the separate individual lines, when you come up on a really tight turn and you're just coming around a tree, you'll actually have well-trained dogs step over the gang line. You have two dogs on one side, they'll pull the line away from the tree so you're not actually rubbing the lines on the tree. Then each dog has their own tug line and they're connected to the tug loop, the loop on the back of the harness. So the lines, when you, when you harness the dog, you pay attention to the condition of the tug loop. You may have to change the loop on the end of the harness because the, the clips actually wear on them. And I've had to replace the clips on the lines because after miles and miles and miles, that brass will wear out. The reason we use brass, though I'm sure there's a lot more fancy materials out there, but you can slip off a glove, grab hold of a gra brass snap, hold it for just a second, clip on hook the dog. So you can unfreeze them really easily. So there's not much that could replace the brass snaps. The bridle is the connection between the, the main line and the sled. The sled itself has a digger brake. There's a brake right between the runners, right, right at the driver. There's a brake. You can step on it with either foot. And then the snow hook is like the parking brake for a dog team. So the snow hook is a separate entity. It's a, a pretty nasty medieval looking device. And they can get pretty unruly on a rough trail. I like to keep mine short so it's only ever right here. I can lean back and if I flip the sled, that thing's not going to catch me. So for the most part, the snow hook is used by stomping it into a, a pack trail. And if there's no real good hard trail, you can actually use the foot brake, maintain the team, slow the team down vocally, and hook, it, hook a tree. You can hook a fence post. You can actually tear them up or off of a car. I mean, use a vehicle to, to park it in. But uh, it's happened. You hook a car and then tear a plastic bumper up. It's like, whoops, sorry. <laughs> so with 16 dogs, I mean, they can pull my truck with the emergency brake on, and the truck's going away. You can run and catch it and grab it. And they're not going to fly off with it, but they, they are extremely powerful animals. As far as leader commands go, here's the most important part. Like I said, you're all the way back on the sled. You're really enjoying yourself. It's really important that you have the proper commands. My favorite, whoa, that's the most important, to stop the team, to be able to control the team. If you're coming up on a hazard or you need them to stop, you say you've got an a immature dog or a yearling dog with his leg on the wrong side of the gang line, whoa, stop. Snow hook down, walk up, pick up the dog leg, put him on the outside, good boy, and never walk out in front of them, leave them do their job, but walk up and literally help the team. And you can get back to the sled, stand on the, the brake, pop the hook. It's a dance, it's a fine dance. You do it wrong, they get away from you. <laughs> Hike is the, the normal word for let's go. Some people just say let's go or simply, are you ready? And the dogs will literally come off of a break to stand up, shake the snow off. And it's like, they're listening, they're listening. All right, hike it up, and they take off. They're waiting for me to pull the hook and actually calm them up. In order to turn right, we say G. And would, I wouldn't be the first person to ever use right and left, but common terminology is really important if you buy a leader from another kennel or if you're trading dogs with other people. It's, it's real easy to have common terminology, and it's very important. G is right. G, I think that's right. G, I think that's right. <laughs> even, even go as far as to put a G on your right glove. <laughs> Notice I'm holding up my left hand. <laughs> Snowmobile tour guide days. You know. <laughs> Throttles on the right. Ha is left. Ha. Try to use really short, concise words. You don't want to say, 
turn right because it's really important that we make this next turn. They just turn you off. The ears go back forward. <laughs> They're like, forget this guy, and you miss the turn. So it's real important to to jeep, 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 and and they'll they'll take it. So haw is for turning left. On by. This is really important. <laughs> On by. If there's a squirrel up a tree, there's a Occasionally, we see the wolves out on the lake, so they'll be playing, and the dogs will tune in, and I'll I'll give them the pick it up command, pick it up. You see wildlife? I tell them pick it up, pick it up, speed up, um, and it's really it's really funny because they'll see us run back up into the woods. We go right on by, and I turn around backwards on the sled, and see the wolves come right back out on the ice, and they're playing again, you know. So. We don't interfere with the wildlife. The wildlife doesn't interfere with us. I've run right past hunters, and I've heard bang two seconds later. So there's a lot of misnomers with a dog team. We sneak right up on really good wildlife. So easy. Easy is very important. You want to slow the team down. Say there's a technical portion of the trail, a long dip or a downhill. I usually tap the digger brake two or three times. Easy, easy, easy. And they'll literally break from a heavy lope into a trot or even a walk. So easy, easy, and then drag drag the brake, and uh, you can get through the technical section. So can anybody name two positions in the team? Who's in the front? Lead the, the lead dogs. The lead dogs. What about um, the far back right in front of the, the sled? Wheel. The wheel dogs. The wheel, literally the steering wheel for the sled. And what about the uh, two commands, the very important, the most important Whoa. one. Whoa, there you go. That's great. What about another one? G. 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 I think that's right. G. I think that's right. <laughs> Happy sled dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and I did have a, I did have a request to show this one. This is my house dog. He doesn't, he doesn't do anything but hog the couch. It's like having your yes. brother-in-law move in on you. Yeah. Get up, get up, you got come on, share the couch. And he's like, oh, at least he's got enough manners to cover his junk. <laughs> he'll, he'll sit up on the couch, and I can actually sit down on the couch. It's a very often occurrence, I'm like, move. He's like, oh, and he slides just his legs forward. I've got about this much couch, so I sit sideways. I got my legs all on top of him, and he's snored. So, anyway, thank you. You get along really well with my lap.